seven tips that will protect your knees in the long run. Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And you'll probably agree with me that knees are pretty important, not only for fencing, but for moving in general. So in this video, I'll present to you seven tips that will protect your knees in the long run so you can have a very long and fruitful fencing career and also just keep moving until you're of old age. Okay, so first three tips are really simple. And these are, do not get hits in the knees. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so use proper footwork in the first place. Don't present your knees unwillingly to your opponents as a target without presenting a threat yourself. The second one is uh, wear proper protection. So use knee guards. And the third is that you only fence at intensities that you and your partner's safety equipment allows for, okay? So this is really like the short-term perspective here, the first three tips. Okay, let's go to the uh, final four, we, which are much more important, in my opinion, in the long run. And the most important thing I'll see over and over again in fencing is that the knee collapses inwards during striking. And that's a, there's a simple reason for that actually. So if we strike, we are usually told to not only strike from our wrists or forearms or upper arms or even our shoulder, but we want to move our torso as well. And usually we want to even use your, uh, our hips as well. But if we move our hips, and the front foot stands forward, then this moving, this movement of the hip shortens the reach between the hip and the foot. Therefore, everything in between, since this is a fixed length, so yeah, you usually have a fixed length of a lower leg and an upper leg during a bout anyways, uh, this has to move, right? Because it can't compress in any other way. So what usually happens, what I see, if someone turns their hip, the knee turns as well. And now you see it really drifting inward here. As I push my right hip forward, my right knee points inward out of a sudden. And this is usually the case with a mandrito, so a strike from my dominant side, from the right side in this case, that I see this. Okay, there's a tendency for the knees to drift inwards. Okay, and just pressing it outwards is not really a great tip for this instance, because you still need a lot of a lot of uh, muscles, a lot of strength to just withstand that pressure, right? Because this is just physics. The knee has to move somewhere. You can press against it, but then it has to move another way. And this is the first longevity tip I wanted to give you, okay? Don't let your knee drift inward, but instead push it forward, okay? So if I push my right hip forward, the leg has to compress, basically, right? But we don't let it compress with the knee inward, but with the knee forward. We remain with the knee in the line of the foot, right? So I strike from the right, and while I push my right hip forward, right? I can even go like really back forward, can really load this cut. But when I strike, I push the knee forward. All right, so this is the first really important motion I would like you all to drill daily, basically. But it's good enough if you do it in your usual training schedule as well. And the same goes for striking from the left with the uh, left knee forward, or, right? So here I could just not push my knee forward, then it will, uh, it will go inward because there's no other way the knee can go, 
right? I can press against it, but that's now getting really hard. And usually if I just press outward, then my hip won't turn at all, but I want my hip to turn, right? So I push it forward. And this is a good tip for cutting in general. You usually don't want to cut sideways, but you want to deliver these cuts towards your opponent. So mentally, this is a good, really good tip as well, right? Push your cuts forward, okay? And this way, your knee will be safe. Okay, the next part, next important tip, the fifth one now, is don't overdo it. Know your limits. All too often, I see people that have a usual little day job working at a desk, sitting all day long, that they still want to do these really challenging poses with like the feet not only at a 90 degree angle but even 130 or something else, right? And this is really hard to do if your muscles are not prepared for it, right? So what usually happens, right? I'll just uh, exaggerate. So if they press the feet outward the feet are maybe willing to turn, but when the adductors are tight, so the inner thigh, then the knee will stay in place and you'll again have this inward drift of your knee, which, um, which puts a huge stress on the knee, especially the inner tendons, right? So then if you again have bad form in your cuts, especially, this will uh, make you suffer in the long run, okay? So, if you don't have the flexi uh, flexibility, know your limits and just turn your back foot inwards a bit, right? There's no shame in that to fence rapier a bit more forward leaning. Hell, you could uh, go even for sources where this is required, right? So, and there are sources where you're almost standing square. Okay. The sixth and seventh step are build the muscles and stretch them. Well, that's pretty easy, uh, pretty easy set, but it's not exactly easily done because, like I said, most of us have a usual day job at the desk. So we have to compensate for these daily movements or not movements that we are doing, right? So for example, if we're sitting, then the backside of our thighs usually gets shortened, right? Because this muscle does not only connect to your hip, but it also connects to the bone in your lower leg and the lower thigh also, so the calf muscles also connect to the upper leg, right? And if I just bend here, this muscle can shorten a bit, right? And if I stay in this position a whole day, then this can cause a, quite a lot of problems. Not only in your tendons, especially down here, which will then have to compensate and under stress they will just snap, at any time, but it also uh, induces stress on the knee itself, right? Because if this muscle is tight and this muscle is tight, they are both contracting basically in a standing position now because they are both now already getting stretched, then this will put pressure on the knee, right? So if both contract, they are both moving the, uh, the bones towards each other, which is really bad for your general knee, okay? Also, we tend to not really train our outer and inner thighs. We tend to forget our lower thighs. So there's really quite a lot of problems here. Okay, so now I will show you a couple of my current favorite stretches and my current favorite exercises that you might already know, you might not, but these are generally good for beginners as well. At this point, I should wholeheartedly recommend Guy Winters' course on hip and knee maintenance, because we have to remember, knees 
and legs in general, they are the product of all muscles involved. So for example, our feet already play a huge role, right? Because if we are flat footed, right, we don't have an arch here, then the foot already collapses and the knee drifts inward as well. So there could be a problem at a lot of points in your body. And if you already have problems, you should probably see a professional, right? I can't uh, deal with it from this side of the video right now, unfortunately. Okay, but some general exercises. Okay, so let's begin with stretches. Like I said, the, the most important ones are, if you're daily sitting, are the backside of your lower calves and your uh, upper thighs, right? So these two, these have to get stretched. And you probably, let's start with the calf, you already know of the exercise where you're standing with the feet parallel to the ground and then you push the back heel into the ground while you push your hip forward until you get a nice stretch in your back calf, okay? And this is an effective stretch, okay? But we can make it even more effective if we can, are able to stretch both calves, both lower thighs at the same time. And if I say stretch, then I mean for more than 30 seconds, even up to two to three minutes is totally fine. And at a really high intensity. So you really have to feel the stretch uh, working to have an, a significant impact on your body. So I don't really have equipment here, but you could easily just use stairs and I'll just use my sword as a, a small example. So maybe you have something, you could put a couple of books in front of you and then a chair behind it just to, to keep your balance. Then you place both of your feet in a contracted position. You already feel the lower thigh stretching a bit. So I go with both, both feet here. You could, hold your, um, you could hold your chair and then you lean forward. Okay, you try to push the hip forward to uh, put as much pressure on your lower thighs as possible. Really feel that stretch right up to the backside of the knee. Okay, for the upper thighs, well, you could of course uh, just with stretched arms and maybe even a straight back, um, tilting your hip forward, right? until you feel a nice sensation down your complete uh, back of the leg, right? So this is a really effective stretch for this as well. And you could still use the chair to place yourself and hold your balance here, okay? So we have the uh, back side of the leg. The next one, uh, the inner thigh and the outer thigh. Okay, I'll present to you something standing. And the first one, is for the inner thigh, of course, put your feet apart and then push your hip to one side, right? We want, again, the angle between our legs and our, uh, our hip. That's the important part, right? The higher the angle here, the more we get to 180 degrees, not really depending on how low you get, the better stretch you will feel in your adductors, okay? And this you can do to both sides. And like I said, really nice sen uh, stretching sensation for at least 30 seconds, even up to two minutes. So I go for two and a half minutes at the moment per, uh, per stretch, right? And up to 10 minutes per week is really effective uh, according to science at least. Okay, the outer thighs, I usually go to the ground, but I want to present to you something standing. Well, you could just cross your feet, right? So I cross my right leg behind my left, okay? I put it on the ground. Now I lean towards this leg and I bend over. So it's again, the angle of the leg and the hip, right? The further I get my torso towards this leg, so my right leg, the better stretch I will feel in the abductors, the muscles that can lift my leg 
to the side, outwards, right? Ab uh, abducting it. Okay, so these are a couple of stretches. Strengthening exercises now. Well, like I said, you could already start with the, with the feet, right? By grabbing, uh, grabbing a pencil, for example, or just walking in sand. This is really best done as a day-to-day -day basis, right? Just walking barefoot has a really nice impact on strengthening your feet. This had to be said. Okay, and the next one is, uh, again, the calves. You could, of course, just push yourself upwards, right? You go onto your toes, then you lower yourself just a bit, not putting your heels on the ground, and then you go back up, right? This is also really nice if you're on a stair or you just put one book under the balls of your foot, for example, so you can get even lower without um, letting the tension go, right? And then you go for 45 seconds, take a 15 second rest, and then you go for another round and another, and that should usually do it. You should feel quite a burn in your calves already, right? And this is also really good to make you, like, uh, your jumps a bit better, because these are the muscles, the lower calves, that will let you jump, okay? The upper thighs are usually not the problem for Francis because most of us, hopefully you as well, are standing in a lower position where the, car, uh, the upper thighs already have to work quite a bit. You could, of course, just do squats, weighted ones as well, uh, but these are usually not the problem. The problem is more like the glutes, the abductors and the adductors. Okay, the abductors ad and adductors can be trained within the same exercise. So you could just go for a side plank, for example, and now both muscles already have to work, right? Because my upper leg has to work with the adductors, so the inner thighs, and the lower with the abductors. But now the one muscle can compensate for the other, so I usually do it like this. I'll just do a kick out front and back with the lower leg and then a kick up with the upper leg. So now my adductors have to do all the work. Now my abductors have to do all the work. And then you switch sides so you have these done as well. And the last exercise for the glutes you usually do on your back. And I'll just do it with my hands on the ground. And it's really pressing your hip forward, right? So it's like doing like cat and cow, right? Just from the other side against gravity. And here you should probably use weights. Or if you don't have weights, just go on one leg. And then you can just press really from your glutes, right? from the glutes, push the hip forward, hold this position for a couple of seconds, and then release and go again, okay? And do this 20 times on each side, take a short rest and repeat. Okay, folks, I know health maintenance is probably not the most popular topic, but it's something we should engage on on a day-to-day -day basis because like I said we are not only fences we are also people <laughs> and people usually like to move in their old age as well. It makes you way happier at least. Okay so long I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, leave a like, share and subscribe and tell your friends. Until next time, ciao!